Hi, I'm Rachel McLeod. I'm a mental health therapist and emotional wellness coach. And today I am interviewing Allison, who went through my program, Inner World Transformation. She was one of the first people that went through my program um, when I made it a self-study course. And so I have never worked directly with Allison. So this is a unique interview. Um, I, I, what I have done is gotten a bunch of wonderful emails from her <laughs> updating me on what she's learning about herself, um, her journey with Inner World Transformation. And um, and the path that she's taken. So I thought it would be wonderful to invite her and have her share her story with you. Um, she, from what I saw in her videos or her emails, um, that her transformation was really wonderful. It's exactly what I would have hoped if we had been working together. So I just kept cheering her on in the emails. Um, so this is my first time actually talking with her, seeing her. I've stalked her a little bit on Facebook when she <laughs> commented in a while. I was like, who is this woman? Who is this Allison? And so, um, so, <laughs> um, but that's it. So I'm really excited for this conversation as well. And um, I'm gonna hand it over to her to introduce herself. Um, and so I give you Allison. Thanks so much, Rachel. I appreciate that. Um, yep, I signed up for your self-study program three and a half years ago, and that's one of the best decisions that I've ever made for myself and for my family. Um, at the time, I was at an emotional crossroads of sorts, trying to be the best mom that I could as my kids were reaching a critical age that, as it turned out, was a time that kind of lined up with old stuff from when I was growing up that needed to get worked through. Um, so that's pretty much the jumping off point of how I signed up for your program. I realized there were probably a lot of tangled things that I wanted to untangle so that I didn't have any blind spots as my kids were going into their teenage years. Yeah. Uh, if you can think back to that time, uh, what were some things that were leading you to think, yeah, I need to do something? I knew that you were you were reading some books. What led you to read the books? What were you seeing? What were you feeling? Okay, so that's a great question. So my, like, if we go way back, but in a nutshell, you know, my upbringing had a lot of obvious stressors in the household, but from the outside until I was about going into middle school, we looked like a pretty functional family on the outside, but things were getting harder and harder and harder to make it look good on the outside as I got older and older and, you know, come from two very traumatized family systems that, had a lot of mental health challenges um, from very easily discernible things over the years for why it got that way. Um, but I knew that stuff was going on and I tried to support everybody the best I could with very few tools to do it. Um, and so that part wasn't a surprise, but I never knew how much that stuff might affect me in other ways that were not on my radar. Um, and I was just the person that just kept going, kept cheering for everybody. You know, I had what my role was in the family when I was home, which was very much a bubble world. And then I had my own life on the outside where, you know, going to school, going to friends' houses and, you know, doing everything that I was trying to do to be a whole person on the outside. Um, yeah. You know, progressed in my career, had a family. But the, the biggest thing that was the, the start of realizing, oh, I probably need to do some work was when the pandemic hit in 2020 and everything shut down and you have the lockdown and you've got to be home. And I was totally good with that. <laughs> I was so good with that. Um, and I'm on the phone with my friends and, you know, as the weeks wore on with that, I'm noticing that they're all having a really hard time with it. And I'm realizing I'm the most relaxed I've ever been. <laughs> and I was like, I probably need to look into that. You know, and really what that came down to was I came from such an enmeshed family system. They were always in my house. They were always with my kids. They were always around. And there were some really, really, really big imbalances. And where I had kept things separate, where I had my world on the outside and I had what my role was in the family. Once I had kids, those worlds started to overlap more and more and more. And there were some imbalances that were not healthy that I couldn't keep up as those two worlds overlap. So once I realized like, oh, I'm the most relaxed I've ever been because nobody's invading my house anymore. Like I should probably look into that. So that's when I started reading, you know, Brene Brown and the body keeps the score and other things like that. 
And then I came across your videos in 2021, which were speaking right to the heart of the issues that I was seeing. So that's when I started following you more and more because everything you were putting out content wise made total sense to me on a cognitive level. But then you kept talking about tapping and I'm like, I don't know what that is. And that seems super weird. <laughs> but as I considered it more and because of what I've seen in my family system with just so much trauma going around and all of the pain and everyone's dealing with it differently and no one's trauma is any less valid than anyone's else trauma, anyone else's trauma because however it presents is however it presents. But right. I had seen how talk therapy had not helped people in my family and I'm not dissing talk therapy, but I had seen how that had not helped. I had seen how meds were a band-aid with extremely limited ability. I had seen all of the traditional approaches in medicine for how you would approach mental and emotional challenges on a chronic level. And I had seen that none of that was anything that I was personally invested in because I had seen people get worse, not better. Um, we were lucky if people maintained. So that's why I considered what you offer because I still don't understand the nuts and bolts of like why something like tapping helps. I just know that it does. Right on. Wow, awesome. I have a question that just came up and I'm gonna wait for it to return. Um, you said so many great things. I want this question. I might have just have to let it go. Um, okay. Was it, was it about- uh, It'll come down. Say that again. Was it about like people's trauma showing up differently, but everyone's no. Oh, okay. Not this time. But let's 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 further on in the journey. Oh, what I yes, what I wanted to ask you was, um, at the time I was also um, offering an intensive coaching program where we would work together intensively, twice a week, two mm -hmm. hours at a time, small group. Um, what made you choose the self study route? And I love that you did. And I even asked you this once on email. I loved your answer. I don't know if it'll come up again, but I, I'm open to, I love all the answers. So maybe there's one back there oh, that yeah. will come up now. There's there's a lot of answers to it. So, okay. So the reason why I went with the self-study and not working intensively one-on-one -on -one and all that, it, it's several reasons. One, I wanted personally from like a bargaining standpoint with myself of like, well, maybe I can learn everything about this, but not have to actually do the tapping. <laughs> Cause I was just like, that's just so unconventional. Like what is the deal with this? Like, I do not want to do that. That's weird. Like that just, because logically like pragmatically that just seemed like so outside my comfort zone. But the second thing too was in my family system, the role I had, was to be the support, to be the person who doesn't need anything, to be the person who's not inconveniencing others. Because the family system I came from, regardless of whether or not people meant it to be that way, it's a cyclical thing that I have traced back generations. But it is uh, a family style that's got narcissism in it. It's got the preferred golden child in it. It's got the, the child that everyone coalesces around to support them you know, as like the patient of the family, and then you've got the scapegoat. So I drew the scapegoat card. And so I do think that conditioning of like, don't need anything, don't need help, don't be on the spot. Like, honestly, I just didn't want to bother you, which sounds completely wild now, because this is like literally what you do professionally. <laughs> But I was just like, I don't want to bug her. Like, I'm sure she's busy. Like, I'll just be over here. And then, you know, if like, I really just can't wrap my head around tapping, then like, that'll be fine. You know, whatever. Um, but, and on top of it, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was going to discover, you know, because it's like, clearly, if I was as relaxed as I was, when, you know, the lockdown happened, and I'm just with my husband and with my kids, and we're just doing our thing, like, if that can go on for weeks and that is not bothering me, like what else am I going to find? And like, I don't want anybody watching me go through that. Like that could be super embarrassing. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, I, I remember. I you didn't add the super embarrassing, but when I emailed you that question, that was your answer back. I related with that so much. I was I felt really fragile, and yeah. I just didn't want to even breathe on my inner world, or I could collapse. Yeah. And um, and so part of me making my program available was for the people who would never heal, never want to do their healing work with yeah. somebody watching, supporting. Yeah. You know, and I knew yeah. that that's that. We're out there, <laughs> and so I wanted to provide that that tool. Um, when you when you first got into the program, what was that like for you? What do you what what was your experience there? I loved that there was a concrete roadmap. I loved that it was laid out very step by step. This is what you want to assess. These are the questions you want to ask yourself. This is how you ask yourself. This is how you push. You know to to think about things and this is how you back off when it's too much the tools you know i wanted there to be actual tools where there was a game plan um where it wasn't one of these things where it's just like okay aimlessly think about stuff and then what you know like because it's not like i didn't know there were things you know, that were going right. to be challenges. I mean, I was fully aware of that, you know, but what do I do with it? You know, how do I move forward? How do I even identify how this stuff is holding me back in different areas? And because that was why, you know, like I said earlier, the reason why I signed up for your program in the first place was because my oldest son was in this, I didn't cognitively know the full extent of it. Like I knew vaguely, like, around when I went into middle school was when everything really blew up at my house and got, it was just domino falling after domino falling after domino falling. Right. And so like, I had a feeling that was related to me being concerned with my son approaching that age, because I'm just like, how am I going to show up for him and be healthy for him and not repeat history? Because I had already gone through, you know, a big professional challenge and I was going through a lot of, you know, birth family challenges of trying to establish boundaries and boundaries not being honored. And it felt to me like I was on this runaway train of history repeating itself because there were a lot of things that were happening for my parents that were outside of their control when I was that age. And I'm like, how is this any different? Like, how do we get a different result where we don't end up with everyone with anxiety and depression and challenges that there don't seem to be answers to, you know, I didn't want to yeah. miss stuff, but I didn't also want to cause stuff by coping in an unhealthy way, you know, um, because I was at the point where I'd been holding everything together and I'd been doing everything at a very high level of functionality in all the different areas of my life. But we were getting to a critical point where this was not going to be sustainable to keep all these different entities happy in the role they had for me, where it was actually aligned with how people should be treated, specifically how I should be treated and what I should be permitted to do in my own life. Absolutely. Yes. And um, that, that generational pattern is so difficult to break. And I think it's so difficult for us to break because we're like, it doesn't make any sense. I get it. I see it. I understand what's going on. Um, we understand the the logical aspects of this, and that's not enough to break this. You know, right. um, when when you started, how did this start shifting for you? So it's interesting because I had actually this weekend was looking back through some stuff because there were so many things happening in so many areas of my life that. I'm like, am I remembering the timelines of these correctly? So I went back and I looked at some things. Um, but basically, okay, so I was in the scapegoat role and I had not always been in the scapegoat role, but in narcissistic families, your roles can change where you can be the golden child for certain years, but then you can be the scapegoat later yep. years. I'm not saying anyone else is going to agree with me on this, but this is, uh, you know, what my experience is with it. Um, but, you know, having been used to that, then I had a professional situation that was following that exact same pattern, which a lot of your videos, you talk about what your nervous system is used to and how alarm bells aren't going off if you're conditioned to being used to certain things. Right. So mm -hmm. I was definitely used to it and it was definitely super covert because other people in the 
where I worked, like we're kind of aware of it, but we're totally not seeing any issues with it either. So it was super sneaky as well. And in that arena, Wait. I had also was was that. That's right. It, it yeah. is is really sneaky, and it's really subconscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it had been super sneaky because it hadn't always been that way. But once enough leadership changes had happened, some people who tended towards operating that way had no checks and balances on them. And it happened much worse. So like there had been a bait and switch in the family arena. There had been a bait and switch in the professional arena. And so um, I had already extracted myself from the professional situation two years before I started your program. And then I'm running into the exact same themes and needs to draw boundaries and boundaries and boundaries, you know, prior to joining your program. And I've been doing that from about the same time frame. And so I'm at this point where it's like, OK, I want to be a whole person. I want to be a healthy person. I want to be a healthy mom who's having healthy kids and equipping them to navigate the world. But I'm kind of at this point right now where it's like, is everyone else the jerk? Or am I the jerk? Because <laughs> there was a lot of there's a lot of shifting that was happening all at the same time because I was standing on my two feet and saying, OK, like I've taken it, taken it, taken it. And this is not cool. Like this is not this is not what needs to be happening. This is not balanced. This is not OK. But because that was in several areas of my life, you can have that moment where it's kind of scary because you're questioning, like, am I going overboard? Or is it that I've just been really, really good at taking hit after hit after hit and making it look like I'm not taking hit after hit after hit. And ultimately yeah. that's what I got to and what I concluded. And the the happy, you know, follow on to that is, you know, I ended up being cold called out of the blue for a different professional opportunity during the pandemic, you know, never met these people in person, but worked electronically for them and had a wonderful experience with them. And there was trust mm -hmm. and there was respect and there was just all this stuff. And it, it really helped to reset my confidence in what I knew I brought to the table, because it's one thing when you know you're in an unhealthy situation and like you see it going on and you're like, this isn't right, but I can't change it yet or I can't change it because it's not necessarily my problem, but I'm I'm taking the downstream effects of it. Like there's one thing to get out of the situation, which I had done prior to joining your program. But then doing your self-study is what helped undo all of the damage I took from being in these imbalanced, unhealthy environments. And then beyond that, once I had undone you know, those hits that I'd taken, it was a matter of going through, you know, the subconscious programming that you talk about, you know, of like, okay, what are the things that I was taught to believe about, you know, the world at large, other people, what your duty is as a daughter, what your duty is as a sister, you know, what your duty is as an insert religion here, you know, like all of those things. And so there were, there was a lot of stuff that I was surprised at some of the areas that popped up once I got to that level of processing and untangling, I was like, oh yeah, I would totally never teach a second grader that that was insane. You know, like stuff like that. Yes. Um, did you notice, uh, uh, what did you notice as your skills built? Did you notice, did you notice them building? Um, and yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Tell yes. Um, so First thing, like you say a lot in your videos, because I still watch all your content, all your content's awesome. And it's all really good stuff to just know on a cognitive level, period, you know, about emotions and relationships and everything else. Um, but as far as like, you know, tracking skills and developing the skills and stuff like that, like you say, like the first 10 hours of processing and emotional freedom techniques, like it just calms everything down so much. And like, I just remember being so excited about that because I just had this angst as I'm getting up to this, you know, like decision point really of like, what is the health of my family going to look like going forward? You know, like, am I going to address this? Cause I've got some big incongruent things in my life that are not going to work going forward, but those are going to be hard to address. Um, but yeah, like the first 10 hours, just like totally calming things down. And my kids noticed it. They totally noticed it because I remember I had started the program 
in like June. And like we'd gone to the beach, which is quite a long drive for us. And when we had gone to the, gotten to the hotel to check in, it, it was not going well and it was going well for, it was not going well for stupid reasons. It wasn't just like there was a line and you had to be patient. You know, I can deal with that after the end of a long drive, but like there were things that were just kind of stupid for us getting super delayed, getting into our room. And my 12 year old at the time, he was like, he was like, mom, he's like, normally you'd be kind of flipping out right now, but like, you're like really calm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, that's like super obvious. Like, thank you, but ah, uh, dang it. Heartbreaking, yeah. You're sweet. Yeah, exactly. But like, no, like, you know, like skills got better. I can even tell now, like, if I'm trying to process too much at one time, because like there's still stuff that comes up, whether it's new things happening or in life, or I'm bumping into like a nerve that I haven't discovered yet is, you know, a little bit raw or whatever, but I can tell just like, okay, I've done enough. I need to back off of this and like, let it simmer and things like that. And I can tell that like, it's really clicking and processing because I will get super visual dreams that are clearly identifying whatever issue it is I'm dealing with. And that's like the really beautiful thing about specifically emotional freedom techniques for me. That's my preferred intervention for processing mm -hmm. this stuff because it's really like, taking advice from myself, which is awesome because my biggest concern with ever going the traditional talk therapy route is what if I don't communicate enough background information to this person and they end up giving me, you know, not meaning to, but they work with what I tell them. And what if I'm not noticing all the stuff that I would be if I'd had a healthier experience growing up, you know, like what if, they're helping me solve the wrong problem because I'm in the dark and they're in the dark, you know? And that's the beautiful thing about this program because I'm not reliant on you to solve my problems. You know, I have learned from you how to do that for myself. And like, that's the, the best part of it because, you know, like I love my husband. He is awesome. We've been married for 18 years, but like, I wouldn't take his advice specifically on my family issues, even as much as he knows about it, because he hasn't lived it, you know, like certain people will get closer to giving good advice than others. But like the most perfect advice is going to be what my brain comes up with after processing Absolutely. it. And I've had like yes. some really awesome dreams where I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, OK, well, I guess I got to deal with that now. <laughs> Yes. And that feedback loop to the self and that confidence that uh, myself can figure this out, my brain can figure this mm -hmm. out is really um, empowering. It's confidence building. And it's really um, when we come from unhealthy family systems, that loop is not yet developed well. Mm -hmm. And a lot mm -hmm. of hits can come or people can try to reroute that loop to insert their information so that our system thinks, well, I need their input. I can't go forward without there. I can't figure it out myself. I don't have experience figuring it out myself. And so part of this program is really making sure that loop is running really well. And then it's the, the confidence is going. We're seeing our brain do these wonderful things for us. And we're just reinforcing it and building it and growing it and maturing it and really mastering it. And, you know, for the rest of our lives. But um, that's one of the things I am the most pleased about in just the healing process, the brain function, but really specifically one of the underlying things this program really helps people do. Mm -hmm. And I realized really. too that I was, I had gotten to a point where I was missing something, but I didn't totally know what, because I'd been using the interventions, but I still was kind of running into the same block on stuff, but no matter how I approached it, it wasn't getting better. And that's when I realized after talking to some other friends who had dealt with similar family systems that, okay, I think I need some additional information and some additional support elsewhere. And that was when I supplemented what I had learned from you from um, another professional out there who had done work specifically on narcissistic family systems, because it is one of the things oh. that goes so missed in traditional therapy and all of that stuff, because it, it's just one of those things that can fly under the radar so much, you know? Um, That's right. Good. I was going to ask you that. Did you take any other supports? Did you? Um, and I would imagine that um, it sounded like you got to a place where you were confident enough to let somebody else in. Yes. Now, I also didn't work with that person either. <laughs> I 
just took the course. Okay. Because I, <laughs> I was like, I just want to learn. I just want to learn. I don't want people looking at me. And then here I am. We're like, I cut everything. It's totally fine. I just needed to go down in the bunker for a while and make sure I was good with it all. And I'm good with it all. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so like, good. to. Uh, but no, actually, that's not true. I did let people in because it, it was a course. It was a video course explaining the nuts and bolts of what's going on in those systems and why it's going on. And it, it's a maladaptive coping mechanism. You know, like I don't even begrudge the people who participated in it and the people who inherited it because I've traced it back five generations on one side and it was on both sides of the family. So like this is in the Tell us a little bit more about that. What does that mean when you say you traced it back? Okay. So like I, okay. So I always went the super compassion and over compassion route, you know, mm-hmm. because I had been raised to believe like, okay, well, this person has depression, so you can never hold them accountable for anything. Like you always have to cheer them up and you can never be upset. And so I had grown up in a household full of that, which is a lot of pressure when you're the youngest. Um, and, and if you're anyone in the family system, right? And so like, I'd always watch this and I'd seen patterns of dysfunction on both sides of the family. And I'm like, this can't be a coincidence, you know, because it was showing up in certain varieties of ways. And then the infighting that would happen because everyone had a different trauma response and some trauma responses seem more bougie than others. Like if you're hyper productive, people have less sympathy for you, you know, because they're like, well, you don't have problems. It's like, yeah, but I'm stuck in like 18th year and I can't stop, you know, like that's, right. that's still, that's still trauma, you know, like it's more productive than yours is, but like, that doesn't mean it's great, you know, that's but right. anyways, I had reached out and because I thought I was interested in ancestry, which I am. However, it really ended up being more of a mental health ancestry because I had thought that most of the trauma was originating from PTSD from World War II service, which clearly happened, you know, um, yes. there was no doubt about that. However, um, there's a lot of estrangements on both sides of my family. It's just this cycle that keeps happening over and over and over, which was part of why it was so hard for me to get tools and help in the first place, because I'd always said to myself as a kid, I'm not going to be like that. Like, I'm not going to be the person who's estranged. Like, I'm always going to find a way to work it out. Like, I'm not doing that. That's not what family does. Right. And so anyways, um, in the course of trying to get information about further back generations, I had tracked down um, an estranged relative who was a couple generations back. And then over the course of the years of building trust and chatting, because he was he was just him, just done with the family, but he did let me in and I would ask him questions about behaviors. And it was interesting that these patterns of behaviors were in place before World War II happened. And he gave me very concrete details. So like there was PTSD after World War II, but there were also some maladaptive behaviors before that, you know, and like, it's not surprising because we had people drafted into World War One, and we had trauma from the Civil War and clear instances of postpartum depression before clearly anyone knew what it was, you know, like the human experience has always been the human experience, you know, but that's why this stuff is so exciting because I feel like this is just such a fantastic tool to make headway in current problems, but also to unprogram the problems from the past that people were not equipped to yep. unprogram, you know, because it's gotten passed down. It absolutely has. In my family, I can say hands down, it has. And that's why this is, you know, one of the most important things I've ever done because I was also trying so hard to make sure that I didn't have confusing roles within my household with my kids or anything that like I was holding back from my kids. Like, I've done all of the right things with my kids and I've been a great mom, but I was treating them like porcelain dolls because I wanted to make sure I don't want to parentify them. Like I don't want them to ever feel responsible for me. And in doing that, (laughs) that's a different form of dysfunction. And even, even after having done this deep dive in the last week before we chatted, because I wanted to make sure I was clear for myself on like, am I remembering this accurately? Is this right? 
yeah, I was, you know, if anything, I was being generous about it. Um, even in having re-looked at everything from a more rooted in myself stance, I can tell that I'm already closer with my kids again in just the last week because I'm not afraid of hurting them now. Like I'm parenting from a place of confidence and okay, whatever happens and whatever gets thrown at us, we have tools. Like it may be really hard for a while. You know, we may not immediately know what we're dealing with, but I don't have to be afraid and I don't have to be motivated by everything I'm trying to not do because that's exhausting because if you're trying yeah. to just avoid all of these things, but you don't even know how they happened, like the vigilance involved in that is exhausting and you have nothing left for joy. But now it's like, okay, no, no, no. Like I know who I am. I know what I deserve. I'm good with this. And I know what I want for them. And I know where I want us to go as a family. And like, that's yeah. just so much more happy and productive and efficient. <laughs> Yes. I want to know how you got there. And I don't know that you can, can, what can you, what, how did you, how did it go from, I, I don't know if this tapping thing is going to work, but okay, I'm doing it and now it's working. And I've got all these challenging stressors and situations going on. Um, and now I'm figuring that out to now I'm noticing I'm afraid. I mean, these are big insights. These are big epiphanies. Oh, thank you. I'm holding myself back from my children. Yes, we do that, right? This part of post-traumatic stress disorder. We're avoiding, we're av mm -hmm. living out of avoidance instead of embracing the moment and being courageous in the moment and authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and thing, uh, so many things. So how did these big epiphanies, if you could tell us, how did they come? And, and, you and know, how did the program help you do that? Well, I would notice things that I wanted to do with my kids or for my kids, but I kept running into like an invisible wall of something holding me back. Yes. And then I would be like, okay, where is that coming from? Like, because we, there were just, there was so much functional, like so much dysfunction around just basic life tasks in the yes. household I grew up in. And there were all of these red herrings of, oh, it's because of not enough money or, oh, it's because everyone's out to get us <laughs> or, oh, it's because of whatever. And so it was just step by step by step of like, no, no, no. Like I want to be able to teach my kids to cook. Like, why is this so hard for me? And just go through step by step by step of like, okay, is it like, you know, just trying to build that in and then going back and looking. But you rocked that. Oh, you, totally, you. <laughs> you totally rocked that. That's exactly. And, and even just even as you're talking about, I'm hearing the language as you're talking about, there was this wall I would run into. Mm -hmm. So it, I, part of, I'm hoping people can find these walls. I teach this, right? Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you learn to find the wall? Um, because it was like, I knew where I wanted to get. But it was like Absolutely. the road wouldn't go there. <laughs> it was like, I kept getting stuck on these off ramps. And I'm like, but I want to go over there. Like, why can't I drive my car over there? Like everyone else is driving their car over there. I can see them having a great time. Like, I want that. Like, what the heck, you know? What strategy, what part of the program did you use for that? Mm, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I would, and this is the thing that's still so funny to me because I still don't understand why tapping works. I do not know, but I just tapped and tapped. <laughs> and you know what? I built the program so that it's just, you're building skills. You don't know the skills you're building, but everything yeah. just starts shifting and shifting. And so when I ask people this, they don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it is like, we're just doing massive brain work in there and I can see mm -hmm. the results and I'm like, what'd you do? <laughs> You know, just epiphanies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the thing, because like the latest one I've had, because, okay, so like I dealt with narcissistic system abuse in two arenas in a very, very big way for many, many, many years. One was a family one and one was a professional one. Okay. I would say from the family one, they didn't mean to do that. I don't know that they knew they did that, but it still ended up being that. And that was not okay. Right. The professional side, I think there was some, some that was an MO for somebody that worked for them and they kept doing it. Okay, fine. Okay. So I, 
wanting to not repeat that and wanting to not be in that system, of course, I was going over and over like, okay, what did I miss? Or how can I protect myself from this in the future? And so like, this is like the most recent epiphany that I had as far as, you know, being in balanced relationships where it's friendships or professional relationships or family relationships or whatever, because there was so much cultural, um, cultural and religious pressure to not be disconnected from family, you know, or to not give up on this or that or the other, right? There's a lot of stigma there. Um, so that was a whole thing to unpack and address. But, you know, ultimately, regardless of what kind of relationship it is, I believe every relationship is a choice and it is a choice for both people. And regardless of whether people are unconsciously participating in these abusive systems, or they're purposely manipulating politics because of what they want. And you see that in all different kinds of arenas where like people know there's a problem, but the problem works for them. So they just keep deflecting it or they keep giving you lip service and saying they'll address it and they won't. And so my way of moving forward so that I can continue, you know, making new friends and making new professional, you know, adventures for myself and this, that, and the other, but not being leaving myself wide open to abuse and being naive to it is that any healthy relationship I've ever been in, like if you look at like an effort meter of one to 10 for how much effort you put into being taken seriously and listened to, not even to have them agree with your position, but just to hear you. Anytime I've been in a healthy friendship or anything else, like I've never had to exert myself over a level three of effort to be heard and considered. And anytime I've had to go over a level three of effort to where I'm like, OK, well, maybe they didn't understand or maybe they're busy or maybe I just didn't find the perfect combination of words for them to get it. And so then I would go up to a level four of exertion and then a five and a six. I don't even mean volume. I just mean creativity and trying to be thing. So then in these, in these systems where like it's not that they don't hear you. That's right. <laughs> and so it's like I get up to a seven or eight and then they're like, what's your deal? Why do you take everything so seriously? Blah, 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 blah. And then it becomes, you know, a problem. So like, that's my boundary that if, if I have to exert myself yeah. over three, that person's not for me. Like if I have a choice in the matter, then no, we're not doing that. So good. Here's what I'm noticing. <laughs> Let me say, you know, the front part of our brain here is mirroring neurons. We're mirroring and matching, but right behind that is maps. We're making maps of people's inner worlds and maps of our experiences and all these maps. If we're not processing, the maps don't get accurate. And so mm -hmm. the maps are distorted. And so, but you fall and they're like, you follow the maps that your brain has and they end up at these continual dead ends, you know, mm -hmm. but the more you're processing, the more the maps are getting more and more accurate. And then it's giving you, then you're getting where to your destination, like you want to. And mm -hmm. then also the brain's telling you, Hey, here's a shortcut over here. Or, Hey, if you do this, and then it's giving us tons of feedback. And then you've got this more processing where you're learning more about yourself and look at how much effort I'm putting into this. And then it's like, you start seeing that everywhere and you're like, this is too much. And your brain starts to get accurate, you know? And then here we go, we've got all these epiphanies and these new boundaries, which we absolutely wanna see our brain shifting our boundaries and making them more and more flexible, adaptive and accurate. And you're doing it. It's all happening right there. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Thank you that. Fireworks. <laughs> Please. And then we say things like, you know, it just works and it's just, it's healing. And I'm just, I've got this and, uh, and, but there's all this brain function that goes on behind the scenes to make that place, you know, of, mm -hmm. of security and integrity and authenticity. And so that's, you know, when you send me these emails, <laughs> I can hear all this stuff in here and so this really makes the celebration so authentic for me i um, love that really well and it's awesome. it's funny because like i had a well-intentioned boyfriend uh back young adult years that when he found out some of the stuff some of the challenges that my family was facing he was just like you know for me i was like yeah this is kind of stressful you know but for him he's like uh that's like a lot, like you probably should go talk to somebody, right? He totally meant well, but I'm like, well, what are they gonna do? Like, I know this isn't great, but like, I can't solve it, you know? And he's like, you should go talk to somebody. So I went to a counselor when I was like 20 
um, for one session and she was like super nice person. But the question I asked her more than once in the session was, okay, like I know all of this stuff that's like super, super traumatic is going on in the family. Right. And I feel terrible for them and I'm trying to support them and I'm sure it's affecting me, but like, I'm aware of it. I'm looking at it. How do I know if I'm handling this in a healthy way so that it doesn't affect me down the road in ways that I'm not aware of? And <laughs> she changed the subject. <laughs> that was like, okay, I'm going to ask her again. So I let her talk some more and I asked again and she just said platitudes and then changed the subject again. And so it was like, I guess I was like ahead of my time because I was waiting for Rachel. I'm like, I want answers. Like, come on. Like, how do you know? Like, it's and not I don't even have answers. I'm like, your brain should be figuring this out. Let's work it so that it does. Oh, it's figuring out. Great. Let's work some more. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't know what you should do. Your brain's like makeup for you. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Like I wanted a tool. I wanted some guidance. Like, is there like a guidepost somewhere, you know? And it was yeah. just like, okay, well. I and guess you know, one of the other things, the brain's supposed to go ahead and look through all the things it's got processed and it's supposed to find places where it just says, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then it's supposed to, in response to, I don't know, it's supposed to tell you, hey, go, go ask some people, go yeah. do some research. You know, there yeah. should be, it shouldn't just be like, I don't know wandering yeah. you know we're not processing there let's get some processing going on let's use our intervention because yeah. it needs to figure these things out that's its job and then yeah. when it's not doing its job then we're over here trying to do more of the job and it's not the right job and it's like no let's get your brain to do what it's supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and then it'll all come together and we'll be moving in the right direction <laughs> well and there's one thing that i left out earlier because you talked about like um resources and things like that and where uh, you know i had taken another pro uh, program specifically informational program related to narcissistic systems. But there was a support group component to that that I participated in, which was super helpful because when you realize how much this happens and for whatever reason, family systems end up going down an unhealthy road of coping and trying to fix problems right. of the past and going backwards. So you just get the energy flow of the family totally backwards where every new member is trying to patch the holes in every old member of the family, which is not what we want. We want the family building forward and supporting the young ones so they can build whatever life they want for themselves. Yes. But talking to other people was super helpful because then it depersonalizes it to a certain extent where it's like, okay, so like, this is a thing because then you get language for it. And that's what that, that um, program did for me because when, when there's language for it, it's like, okay, this is a concept. This is known. This still hurts and it still sucks, but it's something that I can wrap my head around and start to, to work through and, and go back and look at it with more informed eyes. Right. Right. So awesome. Um, one of the questions from the sides is that um, it seems like you have um, really great skills and you had skills before this. Uh, when you're a high functioner, you that you just build skills, you know, mm -hmm. but um, when right now where you're at in your journey, do you see yourself as uh, I don't, he asked the question, but I want to adapt it here. Mm -hmm. um, he said, did she find the support that she needed or is she still acquiring much needed higher skills? And I think this is an important question because um, I think I would not want people to think that my program is the end of the journey. OK. Right. Um, yeah. And um, because life continues and I'm here for basic brain function, which right. creates massively wonderful results you know, we, coming back to the foundation. Um, but as you grow and things like that, do you, um, we need more skills. How are, mm -hmm. how do you, um, how do you see the program um, providing that support and your other directions in your personal growth? So for me, that's a fantastic question. For me, the program gives me the working skill set to, you know, address old stuff that comes up that I might not have known was an issue, but then to also build new skills as I want to grow. 
Um, so not only when I realize like, oh, I'm deficient in this because this wasn't built before, but also like, okay, well, I want to go this direction. So, I mean, I personally use tapping for all of it. Um, Same. But um, what's that? Same. <laughs> Thank you. So, I, so it's a tool for me um, because for me in my specific situation for the challenges I faced was um, a lack of cohesion between who I actually am and who my birth family needed me to be for them to be comfortable. Yes. So when those two things don't line up, <laughs> that's really hard, especially when you have kids and they want to, you know, be around all the time because of your kids, you know, um, then there's, there's much more, I can't keep that separate, you know, yeah. um, because one of the biggest false narratives that I was taught in the family is that I'm the really worried one and I'm super anxious and I overthink everything and I'm controlling and I'm all of these things, but it was just like, oh yeah, she's worrying again. She's worrying again. But like, here's the thing, like, I have climbed mountains. I have done rock climbing outside. I have learned to fly. I have taught other people to fly. I have raced airplanes and I've done two high risk pregnancies. That does not sound to me like someone who just worries about things needlessly. You know, that to me sounds like somebody that knows what they want to do and is getting stuff done. So for me, it has been more the uh, clarity to shed the, the narrative I was given about myself that was never about me. Um, and, you know, like I run into new stuff that's hard for me either because just whatever it is, is a hard thing from life. So you've got to go through that or it's challenging for me because it just wasn't something that I had much opportunity to develop before. Right. But this is a skill set for me to build through that. But the other thing, too, is there's all these additional resources now for me because I know who I am and I'm not covering that yeah. up anymore. Yes. And so like that has opened up all these new um, conversations with my husband and growth for him and new conversations with my kids and growth for them. And yes. so everybody's operating at a higher level. It yes. has led to healing with other family members who saw through what was going on. And now there's clarity there. And then it's also led to me being able to build a lot more friendships, you know? So like, just everything is leveling up and yes. so just more resources all the way around. That's right. And that's good brain function. I mean, that's what our brains are supposed to be doing. Like, yes, thank you. <laughs> right. Because it, we should be seeing mastery. We should be seeing growth. That's the whole um, yeah. when things get processed. That's what brains are designed to do. So I yeah. love that. I love that for you. I love that for your family. If you could give um, people watching some advice or yeah, what would you say? What would you tell them? I think for me, it was to um, really put pause on listening to what other people are saying and to listen to what I always knew was true. But you know, for X, Y, Z reasons was told that that's, you know, not the case or whatever, you know? So like, for me, it was really about um, trusting myself and working on it and not being afraid of what I would find um, and to just be unapologetic about it. And I think something really for women too, I think there's a lot of expectation of like, don't ever be so confident that anyone can say you're arrogant. And I think that that societally is a little bit of a double standard for how women are supposed to feel about some things than men. That's just my perspective on it. But that's the thing that I wanted to make sure coming into this talk was that I was very like unapologetically confident about what I know to be true, because I always in my family system that I came from, if I had good news or, an accomplishment or something like that, I had to play it down. So like I was giving them my happiness because they needed it. But then I also wasn't making them uncomfortable yes. by being too bright of a light. Yes. So like, don't be afraid of being awesome. And that sounds mm -hmm. weird. And maybe that sounds weird coming. I don't know. I don't even feel bad about that. Like, don't be afraid to be awesome because I think everybody's awesome. You know, if you get to be yourself and you're actually trying to grow, 
you'll be awesome. You're probably already awesome because anyone who's trying to grow is awesome. <laughs> I want that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so well said. Um, Alex says, Alex is giving some feedback. This is amazing um, that you're experiencing a level, a level up moment through your intentional interventions. I'm inspired by this dialogue. Oh, thank awesome. You. Yeah, I know that there will be many people impacted by this. And thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for, gosh, taking, um, I don't know how long you knew me before, but taking a risk, trying my program and gosh, and then coming on this talk. I really appreciate this. And uh, I know many people will as well. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I, I mean, honestly, like you have ended, like your tools have ended cyclical generational trauma and problems for, for my family. Like that is not an overstatement. It, it just isn't. And I love it. And I just appreciate the tools that you're putting out there. And it's funny because um, you know, the way that I found out about you was the Facebook algorithm put your, your video in my newsfeed. And I was chatting with a girlfriend about doing this today. And she's like, how did you find her like internet research? And I'm like, well, here's the thing. Like, I can't credibly complain about algorithms ever again, <laughs> <laughs> because like clearly Facebook knew I needed this and I did. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, um you know, whatever. But yeah, thank you so much. Like, I really, really appreciate it. And I just love how much you cheer for everybody and you just want everybody to succeed. And I appreciate Alex's comments and I'm rooting for Alex and all of us because, you know, we deserve it. That's right. That is, that's right. That's right. Powerful. It's like a mic drop. Um, <laughs> very, very well said. We do. We really do. We really, really do. Um, Okay, let me, um, I have here some fancy features on my website, I mean, on my, this new little app thing. So I do want to um, invite anybody watching this who feels um, like they want to take a roadmap to healing that, that you can um, click on that link to my program, Inner World Transformation, and get started right away today, and get instant access. So um, and this is a much cheaper <laughs> price than than what Allison paid back in the day. Totally worth it. I don't even feel bad about it. Totally <laughs> worth it. I'm here for you. <laughs> and I'm not certain how long this will last because I am flowing with my inner world and my own clarity and I get different uh, different thoughts as I'm dialing things in as well. So um, this is a great time to take advantage of that. And um, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Allison, again. And please keep those emails coming. I love them. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's like the it's like getting um because they're long. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm a long form poster because I was like, I wonder how many times I've emailed Rachel before. You know, I looked this weekend. I was like, oh, no, I've emailed her so many times. Like, I, it It's like, you know, we don't get magazines anymore, like in the mail that we, you know, I, it's just not the same. So it's like, it's, I save it. I wait. Anyway, I really enjoy that. <laughs> sharing your like, this is and then I'm trying to do because my favorite thing is like, what happened? How did it work? What's going on in there? <laughs> So I really enjoy that. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for being you. Thank you for knowing you deserve healing. And thanks for sharing that with us. Aww, thank you, Rachel. You're awesome. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, we'll see you all later. Bye. Now, if I...